Welcome to this week's edition of Bridge to Faith. Today, on Bridge to Faith, we have the great opportunity to be in a land of tea. Believe it or not, we're here in a part of India where they grow tea in these beautiful tea gardens. So let's get started on today's edition of Bridge to Faith. Faith is often a matter of personal preference. Often when we talk about faith, we're talking about what somebody believes in without any real proof behind it or something that they grew up with. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, told us that children are actually born already in the proper faith, in the proper condition. He said a child is born on the fitra or the natural inclination and condition to be in submission and peace with Almighty God. So much so that he also told us that when children die, regardless of the religion of the parents, all children who die go to paradise. And this is a very nice understanding when you think about it. Children are born blameless and sinless according to the teachings of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. He even told us that when the children go to paradise, that they're in paradise praying for their parents, saying, Oh God, let my parents be here with me as well. When we talk about the natural condition of what true belief is, and then we talk about the proofs that go along with it, it becomes evident that the one that has the most proof, the most evidence, certainly should be the one to be considered. After all, blind faith is one thing, but faith with proof is certainly something else. When we talk about science, science is based on testable evidences that you can prove. Often people talk about science as though it were opposing faith, but in reality, the more faith you have in what you have evidence for, I believe that's called proof. And inshallah, this is the proof that we're all looking for. We always invite those of other faiths to look at Islam based on the evidences and the teachings rather than what some Muslims may do or not do. The important part, though, is to remember, regardless of how you were brought up, regardless of the religion of the parents, to look to your own faith, what you believe and why. And the more I think that we look at our faith and work toward what is good in it, the more that it makes it a nice bridge for all of us. But we're going to do something right now and then we'll come back with a second part of our program here on Bridge to Faith. Today's episode, I want to talk about faith to someone who used to be without faith altogether. Matthew is here with me, our special guest, and we've already talked with him before and found out that you used to be a... Atheist. Not a theist. Not a theist. An a, a theist is one who has faith. That's true. And an atheist... Is one that does not believe in God whatsoever. Zero. Zero. Not even... Not even a little bit. Mm. Yeah. What you told me about was, and if I remember right in the program, that you, from your father, he was a bit of leaning toward the scientific aspects of thinking. Yep. If I don't see it, I don't hear it, I don't smell it, I don't taste it, it ain't. Pretty much, yep. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, we came to find out that that doesn't always hold true. Well, it's, uh, yeah, it's explained some things, but uh, in terms of explaining the whole picture, or the grand picture, I think the perspective of the atheist is somewhat limited. Okay. Yeah. Now, tell us what it's like to live without faith, and then I'm going to ask you a couple more questions. But living without faith at all, what happens? Well, I found for me personally, of course I can't speak for everybody, oh, no. but for me personally, uh, I was, I would go through periods of having firm belief in a certain thing or a certain set of beliefs. Uh, you know, my basic moral concepts of trying to be a good person and be honest and be fair and be nice to people, that was there, don't lie, don't steal, I knew those things were wrong. But in terms of what I believed in on a deeper level, I found that that sort of shifted from year to year. And it was, it was very, uh, and, it, and it deep inside, I felt 
quite lost. Because I was a very introspective person. I guess some people maybe never think about these things. Uh, but for me personally, uh, you know, I, I deep inside, I found that uh, as the years went on, as I got older, I wasn't standing on firm belief. Okay, but what difference does that make? I mean, why do you have to believe something? Well, for me, uh, you know, uh, I guess it wasn't so much of a choice. I guess at some point in my life, as, we, as I mentioned earlier, I was compelled to believe in God by a strong inner conviction. And prior to that, uh, I had convictions before, very firm convictions in certain beliefs. But those convictions, because I guess they didn't have a, a foundation in faith, those convictions dissipated over time, or they shifted and changed, and left me feeling you know, quite lost. As I got older, and I found that my beliefs changed, and I could look back and say, I used to believe this, now I believe something different. And as I was getting older, uh, I just felt more and more lost. What we're talking about is when children, you know, they get older, they start realizing some of the things they used to think about weren't necessarily true. And it doesn't mean, though, that that's, uh, you know, I come to a new realization that because I'm bigger now, this is actually this and something else is so and so. But that still doesn't mean there's a God. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> and the, the thing that uh, I think is important when we talk about faith is to have something to build the faith on. Yeah. Now, you said you were atheist. I was. Okay. Do you know which country has the most atheist percentage-wise? I'm dying to find out. I don't know. Okay. Well, don't die. Okay. Because here's the answer. They claim, when I was up in the Netherlands, they said that Denmark is claiming they have the most. Okay. And then Norway is claiming they have the most. Same. And Sweden claims, no, they all say they're number one. They're all competing. I guess. Okay. Well, here's actually what they're telling you. They're saying that they're the last ones to accept Christianity and the first to kick it out. I see. So now, we're Muslims, but we still don't like to see people kicking out Christianity. That's true. That's true, because we don't want faith to be destroyed totally, but that's not, the, that's not the point of having faith. You don't call other people to lack of faith. Mm. Makes sense? It does. So now, when I was there, they told me that they were number one for this atheist business. They were the first ones to kick out Christianity. Oh, and guess what else? What else? All three of them are competing to be number one in the world for suicide. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty alarming. Yes, yeah. and they would show me buildings that people jump off of, bridges that people jump off of. Now, we talk about jumping off of bridges. You're watching Bridge to Faith, by the way, and uh, we want you to use the bridge to get to faith, not to jump off of. So Different this bridge. Is, yeah, well, you know, I've had people watch my shows in the past and tell me that they were on the verge of doing something very drastic or radical, and then they see our program, we're talking about settling down, thinking about things, and yep. putting your life in perspective. Very and, important. And they tell me that yep. it benefits them. So I guess that's what I'm leading up to. Yep. How did you feel before you had faith? Well, I guess I vacillated a lot. I went through periods of my life where I had very high emotion and uh, felt like everything was in place and felt happy, but most of that was because of external things. Uh, and uh, also, uh, you know, I went through periods of deep, dark, extended depression. Um, you know, that was very from one side to the other. Yeah, extremes yeah. over a period of years. You know, not from day to day, but periods when I was felt everything was clicking and I was doing great. You know, because uh, uh, mostly externally things were going really well. Uh, to periods where I felt completely lost. But if externally things went bad, then you'd get depressed. Yeah. Well, this is another thing I found in those countries I just mentioned to you, that they are the highest also for alcoholism and drug abuse. Mm. Well, that's As, too surprising. And for unmarried pregnancies. Oh. All of the things that morally people frown upon, mm -hmm. those who have faith look down on it and say this is the wrong way to go. And these countries who are having the least faith are claiming they have the most of those things. Mm. So look at the parallel we've got, especially the suicide. I, I keep going back to that because that's ultimate. Yeah, that's dramatic. So can I ask you this? Sure. While you were atheist, did you ever contemplate suicide? I did, as a matter of fact. I didn't know you were going to ask me about that tonight. But uh, I didn't know I was going to ask it either. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, I, I certainly did on more than a few occasions. 
Yeah, it's, it's really but good. see, now look, from the standpoint of logic, yeah. if a person's an atheist and doesn't believe in God, don't believe in hereafter, there's nothing after this, the last thing in the world, logically, that they would do is take their own life. Yeah, but I guess when a person's that miserable, logic is thrown out the window to some so extent. So the, the fact that a person has that kind of misery should make them wake up and realize, hey, wait a minute, there's a God. People need help. They need help. People need a lot of help. And, and coming to faith is, this is, of course, our message, yeah. that faith is very important. If you're a Christian, don't give up your faith to become an atheist. If you're a Jew, don't give up your faith to be an atheist. Don't give up your faith. Hang on to what you've got. We call people to what? To come closer to God by understanding more about God and His message. And think about it. We are asking you to use your mind, be logical, yes, but just because something doesn't work, don't automatically throw the baby out with the washroom.